Here we are. <laughs> All right, welcome you guys. Uh, a little bit late and on take two. So a, a few of you guys have found us um, and hopefully the rest will. Uh, I'm Allison Crow from AllisonCrow.com and I'm doing a series of interviews with some really amazing people who are living examples of what I call share your heart show your work. And in doing that, they are get, not only sharing their heart, but they're connecting their hearts with people out there. And they're allowing other people to experiment their work, which number one, blesses other people. But number two, it actually grows their business. And so um, I know for a lot of people, marketing is a dirty word. And, and it's not that we're doing it in order to, I think most of the people I'm talking with, we've just realized, hey, this is a great way to meet new people, to connect with people, to share my heart and show my work. And it's this symbiotic relationship. So today I am interviewing Sarah Ballard at Thrive with Sarah. And I met Sarah in Austin, right? You know, what was it? Four months. We did four months of this small group, um, this small coaching group. I wanted to do live because I had done a lot of things on social media and I wanted to meet some human beings. And Sarah um, came to that. I'd never met her before. And we got four months of that. So just four sessions before my husband and I decided to move. And um, so I left town. And somehow I came across Periscope. I don't even know how I came across Periscope. Uh, and you were one of the first people like that I, I was like, oh, Sarah's there. And so you were really my portal and my entry and my, you can do, not just you can do this, but like, trust me, people will want to see this because you've been doing it. So Sarah, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell um, everybody just a little about a bit about what you do. You do so many, so many things. You're like me, we do a lot, right? A lot of all over the place. <laughs> but just yeah. introduce, what do you want people to know about you? Say hi. Okay, that was a little okay, broken, broken oh, up. Sorry, just introduce yourself. Say hi. Let them know what you want to want them to know about you, okay. and then we'll get going. Yes. Well, great. My name is Sarah Ballard, and I consider myself. My title is an intuitive life doula, and I also am a movement teacher. I help people get in touch with their bodies and their intuitions through movement, through connecting with their feelings and getting them centered, coming home to their bodies so that all of their life, their business, their relationships, their parenting comes from this place rather than seeking outside of themselves. So everything I do revolves around these facts. So I teach a movement class called Koya, which is amazing and life-changing for women, as well as intuitive readings and then longer, um, coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching to help people come back into their bodies and trust their intuitions, really move from that place of knowing. That's basically, that's it. basically me in a nutshell. <laughs> I love it. One of the things I've been missing in the work that I do, and I do um, some painting retreats at my house and, and I've done retreats in Tulum and other places around the world. And my natural gifts are not around music and movement. And so Sarah is actually coming to um, a wild and free painting retreat at my house. And I've asked her to um, be a co-facilitator and a leader and to bring that movement practice, um, which is perfect for the expression, you know, for wild and free and the themes of expression too. And it's one of the things I need, like to feel more comfortable in my own body. So Sarah's gonna be bringing um, some Koya every day uh, to our group. And I am, I just feel like that closes the, the circle as far as what I was missing, what I was able to provide. And so I'm so excited to have you for that. And then this other thing that I just, I love social media. I have loved social media. My very like first experience, I was sick one day, I was home from the office, I was never sick. And I got on Twitter and Facebook the same day in 2008. And within a week, I had met a girl that was also in real estate who referred me some clients from South Africa. And three months later, I had made $47,000 because of that Facebook connection. <laughs> and I was like, dude, this is cool. Like you can make friends and it also impact. It was a, it was a twofer. Right. And so ever since then, I love 
being online because <laughs> I don't have to leave my house. <laughs> and so then comes Periscope. And so there are so many different media channels. And so I would love to hear a little bit about your journey before Periscope and social media, and then especially what Periscope, which is one of your chosen places right now, and what it has done for you. Did, am I, am I not? Okay, so I missed most of that, but I'm pretty sure you said something about, um, <laughs> I was like, oh, I think I got it. More about time. what um, social media, like my social media, what impact. Yeah, well, let me do a sound check real quick. Is anybody else having trouble hearing me? We must be really having connection problems. Okay, I'm clear. It's all your fault, Sarah. <laughs> it could be just me. I, I know I have trouble. So, okay. <laughs> so what everybody's like, no, here's I want to hear the before Periscope social media and the after, the before and after story of social. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Well, my previous life was I was a massage therapist and craniosacral therapist for about 13 years. So I was doing body work. Mm -hmm. And the only way I met clients was referrals, like one-on-one -on -one referrals. My client would love their service and they would tell a friend. And that's, that's pretty much how my business ran. I didn't do any marketing. I didn't even do any network marketing, just straight out referrals. Mm -hmm. But then I got onto Facebook just for personal reasons I you know I didn't even really use it for my business my business had a page but I never really used it um, and in the last few years my business has shifted and changed as I as I allowed myself to do less physical work for the same amount of money but still impact people's lives deeply with coaching or with doing my intuitive work, I, I really accepted that. So as that shifted and changed, so too did my social media presence. And I began to create a community on Facebook through my Facebook page where I did these weekly readings, these Wisdom Word Wednesday readings with Oracle cards and people love them and they loved coming in and using their own intuition and they got a little bit of you know guidance or whatever for their Wednesday. And I would say that, how long did it? A year and a half. I've done those Wisdom Word Wednesdays, Wednesdays for a year and a half. And I got a couple clients, but basically it was kind of static. People like enjoyed um, participating, but there wasn't much uh, return. So I didn't get, okay, hi. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, squirrel, sorry. Um, <laughs> looking over at the comments. Um, I didn't get much return on that, but when I started Periscope in June, I opened up Periscope. I saw that a couple other people that I know who own businesses were on it. And I was like, what is this Periscope thing? I open it up and I'm blown away. Like the first few days I'm on there, I just couldn't get enough. And I'm scrolling through and looking at the world map. And I had this immediate hit that this is not only going to be big for me, but big for everybody else mm -hmm. is this completely new way to connect with people and have real like heartfelt conversations with other human beings. And I'm like, this is what I've been waiting for. Right. Um, this is my way of connecting with people. I have said time and time again that I'm not an internet marketer. I don't like hustling my business. I don't like shoving me into people's faces and into their, you know, newsletter boxes and stuff just to get my information out mm -hmm. there and so Periscope has really been a great opportunity for me to just be me because that's all I ever wanted to do in the first place um, I never wanted to be a brand mm -hmm. um, not ever and I don't want to be this big machine of an online entrepreneur I just want to do what I do and help people and so I just put myself out there and I'm like I don't know what I'm going to say. I I don't know what I'm going to do on Periscope, but I'm just going to see what happens. And it just kind of snowballed itself. And I got to know a couple people, watched some really big names, started pulling names out of those, started following those, and just kind of followed this trickle down effect. And now it's been really amazing to watch the community develop all 
naturally on its own just from being authentic and just mm. being myself without without trying to um, create this brand fame framework around who I am and what I'm selling and what kind of content I have to share. It's just like, how can I be of service? Mm -hmm. And then put myself out there. And since then, I've had, I, I don't know, I have five times the amount of newsletter subscribers, although they haven't been written to nearly as much as I should take advantage of. Um, but people are opting in. People are looking at my website. They're looking at my entire mm -hmm. site versus just one page. Or, you know, they're, they're going to more than my blog. They're going to the About Me page. And how can I work with you? And what is this Koya that you teach? Um, and they're wanting to find out more information. So I find that Periscope has given me hugely engaged community. Mm -hmm. Like they want to participate with me and with the other people that are in the same scopes as well. So it's blowing my mind. And many people calling me out of the blue to say, how do I work with you? Like, please take my money. How do I work with you? Yep. This is amazing. So there you go. That's, <laughs> I love what you said. Long-winded. You didn't set out to be a brand. And do you see that you you are, I mean, like those of us who are yeah. these solo practitioners, <laughs> we are the brand, right? We are. And, mm -hmm. but I, you know, I'm the same way because I don't like to think of, I want to go out there and market and have this strategy. I always wanted more of grassroots movement. If my work resonated with you and, and it, the vibration bounced off each other well and, and that worked then perfect and you also i mean you have a business you make money for your family you're you know this is we also want to grow our businesses and i think sometimes it's so easy or i know what i didn't want to do and what i heard you say is i didn't want to go strive to do that or be that and and this especially periscope has that has been a massive side effect. It's like, it's like it has made it easy <laughs> to grow the business by just being me instead of having to, to push it out there. That's what I love about social media. Um, and especially for, for anybody who, and it doesn't have to be, I mean, it can be almost anything, right? Any, anybody that offers any kind of a service. I mean, you could, I guess you couldn't really, I don't know. I was trying to think if you were a massage therapist, how would you do it? But there's so many different businesses that I think you, people just want to know who's behind the camera. <laughs> and I love how I'm like you, my list subscription has gone through the roof. Um, my actually, we did one of these um, blabs on Monday with Stacy Nelson. She had somebody sign up for her program. That was not our intention. We just want to get the word about, we want to encourage people to, to think about what being willing to be themselves and be visible and share your heart and show your work. You give people the experience of working with you and, and whatever channels. So Periscope, let me ask you a couple more questions about this. Um, uh oh, we lost her. I lost her. I'll tell you while she comes back on. When I first got on, oh, you lost me. I lost you. Yeah. Uh oh. I have audio. Hold on. I have no video. Can you guys see me? Or is it just... Hold on. Okay. Is anybody in the room um, work with angels and protectors? If so, type in the comments. <laughs> is Annalisa here? I have a theory. Okay, Sarah's coming back. There she is. Am I back? We are back. <laughs> Sorry okay, about that. I was like, know my uh, theory. I don't know what and happened. We may have to talk about this. So I, we'll just, we'll, I'm just going to come out of my woo closet. Um, I had a conversation this morning with a colleague and we were, um, he's kind of a medicine man and a modern theory, he's a, we, I was talking just about, you know, I do a lot of spiritual work and energy work and I hear and see stuff. And I was mentioning something and all of a sudden he put into my mind, um, he had this very male protective energy. There goes Sarah again. Sarah, can you hear me? Uh, so 
so he was talking and I yeah I can hear you can you not I can't see me see and hear you. me yeah it dropped you off I can hear you fine so weird all right angels come protect our scope <laughs> Anyway, so he's talking to me this morning and, and we have a very powerful call and he wanted to share something with me about how my light shines and because my light shines, I am that there are dark energies that will not like it. And I've never been concerned with the dark energies that will not like my light. I've never felt the need to protect myself against that. And in my, I, I just have this long standing theory, anyways, that a lot of times when higher spiritual energies are good, the technology energies suck. <laughs> and so that's what it is, Sarah. You and me together, we broke the internet. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Sorry about that. Okay. I'm sitting, I'm sitting by my Wi Fi box. Hopefully, that, that's I helpful. know. It's crazy. Okay, so get back on track. Someone did just ask, what are we talking about? Exactly. So really what we're talking about <laughs> in the middle of all of our technology programs, we're talking about how being you, and when I say you, you know, anybody watching, how using social media to share your heart, be authentic, and to show your work, to give the experience of working. And so I was going to tell this story when I first started talking with Sarah. She was doing readings online on Periscope doing shows. So she'd taken what she talked about at the beginning of this, uh, this blab. She'd taken those win wisdom word Wednesdays and started doing daily readings for people. And her scopes were huge. It was so fun, people from all over. And so I'm talking to her, I'm like, well, what would I scope about? And, and this was in my first week and she was like, oh, you should paint. And I was like, painting on scope? Like, that'll be like three hours long or, you know, who's going to sit there? And she said, <laughs> Oh my God, Allison, there are people that watch people put on makeup for three hours so you can paint. And it gave me permission to, to try something I never thought people would be interested in because in the marketing world, we're taught you have to have a niche. You have to have a high value thing to give. You have to have bullet points and you have to keep it short. <laughs> And Periscope is the opposite of all that. It, it has room for that, but there's so much more room. And so, um, yeah, so t tell everybody about your scopes. And then, can you hear me? You're looking at me funny. I heard, yeah, I heard, tell everybody your, and then that's all I heard. I was like, uh oh. <laughs> Tell her about about your scopes. Um, okay. And then, hold on one second. So, just in the few months I've been watching you, not even two full months, right? Probably closing in. But June, I started yes. like June eleventh. But within the past month, you brought Koya on the scope. Yes, in the last three weeks. And that was a big step for you. Three weeks, or maybe maybe four weeks. So it's right. not even been a month. Yeah. Big step for you though. Like, yeah. And that was super vulnerable. Share, share, share. So tell us about it. What? Tell, tell us about, okay. about, you know, you started out with readings and then next thing you know, you're doing, you're leading scope, uh, Koya classes. Yes. Okay. So I think I got the gist of what you were saying. I'll just jump right in. Um, yes, I started out with readings because it was something that's easy to do. It's something that I could give back, you know, immediately to the people who were watching the scopes. I could interact with them in a way that felt authentic and real. I could give value um, without having to come up with content every day. It was like, just so people could have an experience and people could, you know, get to know me um, cause I'm really open and vulnerable and, um, less vulnerable, far more transparent. I'm super transparent. Like this is just who I am and let's have a good time mm -hmm. doing these readings. And, um, I hesitated bringing Koya, sharing Koya because there's certain aspects of Koya that are done specifically for, for my pleasure, for, for the dancer, for the person who's doing the movement. And it just felt wrong to put it on a website that feels very voyeuristic, mm -hmm. right? Because people can just come into the room and stare at you and not participate, 
uh, not do anything but just stare. And I was like, I don't know that I'm comfortable with that because um, it's not about like feeling uncomfortable in my own body. It was just like, this is for me. Like I, I would hate for somebody to walk into an actual Koya class and just like stand there and stare at us. <laughs> um, I would feel really weird. And so I was like, I don't, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'll find a different way. And then one morning I was like, nope, I'm just, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to, I feel vulnerable and, and visible. So let's just push right through. And I jumped in and taught almost a full Koya class on Periscope and it blew me away. Mm. It blew me away. And that really shifted something in the way I offered my Periscopes. It's shifted in the way that people have responded to me because for whatever it was that I shared during that Koya class, the amount of transparency and vulnerability, that's what people wanted more of. It doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter what I say. Um, they wanna come and hang out on my scopes because they too want to feel that visible. They too want to be authentic or confident or feel good in their bodies. So it kind of doesn't matter what I have to say or what mm -hmm. I have to share. It's just like, yes, I want Sarah's energy. Like, that's what I want. I want to go hang out with Sarah because I feel better about myself, you know, when they're, when they're on my scopes, which I have to say is it's hard. It's hard for me, you know, as, as an entrepreneur getting used to really accepting and receiving this kind of attention because it's not something I'm used to on like static Facebook or Twitter you know, just words or images, this is real life, you know, um, feedback. It's instantaneous feedback. And it was like, oh, you want more of that? Okay, we'll do more mm -hmm. of that. Um, and I'm just so, I don't know, pumped up and excited to see where this even goes from here. You know, what what gets created just from this. And I already know, like I'm I'm already creating a new program based on my experiences through Periscope. Mm. So I'm creating a group program um, for women because the people that are coming to me and saying, I don't know what you do, but can I pay you to work with you? They're telling me what they need for the first time in my business. Mm. Instead of me generating like, what do I think I'm good at? And here I'll create a program. Mm -hmm. These People are just, they're begging. They're yeah. like, please do something like this. Help me, help me have this, what you do so well that I can't see. So not only am I mirroring the energy that they have and want back to them, but they're mirroring to me what they need. And it's probably the most magical time in my business right now in the last five, five years, mm -hmm. because I'm actually getting this instantaneous feedback that says, wow, what you do is awesome. Can I have more, please? And can you wrap it up in this kind of package? I was like, thank you. <laughs> Wherever the Periscope gods, thank you for giving me this opportunity um, to really share myself because I felt kind of restricted in other social media ways. It's like, how do I formulate who I am into a status update mm -hmm. or into a Facebook group where I can post once a day? Like, it just didn't, and this, you know, my scopes, last night's scope was two hours and 26 minutes. Long. I only caught like the it last was bit of it. It was it hilarious. Was just straight up. <laughs> it was straight up crazy. And it was, it was crazy good fun. Um, and I'm glad I, ha I have it and I can go back. I refuse to watch the last hour of it though, because it was delirious. Um, but I had 26 people in there until the end of the scope. Like, it's like, yeah. blew my mind. I was like, what is happening that 26 people want to stay here? But it feels like a big giant party, but yet every single scope helps my business. Mm -hmm. Like that's blowing me away right. right there. So it doesn't matter what I say or what I do or who I connect with, each and every scope creates this particle flow outward of me getting to share my message, me getting to share just, you know, whatever I have to give with people as well as I get fed continuously um, with mm -hmm. feedback.
Um, and it just helps me create and create. So the particle flow that I get to put out with social media now is, I don't know, a thousand times oh, different. It's so fun. And you're, you're creating community. I mean, you know, Stacy, who was on Monday was talking about, that's what her specialty is. She creates community. And, and I never really thought of it. I mean, there is a community, but I never specifically thought about creating community. And one of the things last night, I was I was actually FaceTiming with a friend and a client, and and then I hopped off and I hopped on the end of your scope. And by that time, everybody there, you know, I I, I come into the room. It's like, but and I felt like I walked into your house and all my friends are there, and and. <laughs> It, it it was the delirious part of the evening and I laughed for the rest of the scope and it I'm having trouble putting words, but it, it was like, I walked in, I was like, cheers. You know how Norm walks into the cheers bar Norm. <laughs> and even though I was late to the party, like Allison and I'm like, hi. And every, you know, all my friends are there and you really had, you guys, okay, we'll just come out with it because you can see it on her catch replay. They ended up talking about poop poop jokes and poop. Okay, this is how serious it was. Like I get in and I'm like, what's the recap? What did I miss? And it was it was delirium. It was 13-year-old kid humor. And it was much needed for all of us. I mean, I think did, did, we were talking about laughing, Linda, like, oh my gosh, we're all getting our 15 minutes of laughing in. And it just felt like winding down at the end of the day with some of my closest friends and and that's valuable that's it's valuable as a human it's valuable personally and the side effect is yeah it helps your business too that's that's why this share your heart show your work because and why specifically the story of you were just doing the readings and then you're like, all right, I'm going to dive in and share something really intimate, which is your Koya. And you just, you shared all of your heart and huge. And so I know a lot of people are very nervous about that. Uh, a lot of people. So I'm curious of those of you that are here, I got to put back on my glasses because I cannot see without them. But I'm curious in the chat bar, or if anybody wants to hop into one of the open seats, if you, if you have questions or are nervous about that visibility, right, wherever it is, is, is anybody, and you can, in the, there's a, there's a little chat bar, it depends on if you're on the computer or if you're on your phone, but you can comment. Is anybody there like going, there's no way I could ever scope or I don't want to be seen that much, but yet there's a draw to it. And we have a little bit smaller group now. But I've met lots of people. I was very unsure if I had enough to say. So you can, why don't, Laughing Linda, you want to come on? Y'all come talk because, yes, perfect. I love this. <laughs> okay, so Linda, you guys, this is so cool too, right? I don't know how to turn my camera on. Are you on a computer or your phone? Uh, computer. You have to give access. Where do I find the access button? Usually something pops up. Okay. <laughs> but I don't know. I see it. Where? Where is the access button? Oh, wait. Maybe up in the corner there's a camera. Uh, hold on. Continue allowing access. You may have yeah. It should work. Oh, I just turned Sarah off. Where'd she go? Sarah yeah. disappeared. Uh-oh. I still don't have a camera. <laughs> well, we can hear your voice. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sarah. Come back. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sarah. Sarah, are you still there? No? All right. I'll get off so she can go back no, in. No, stay there. There's there's four oh. seats. Stay right there. She'll be back. She's She <laughs> got kicked out of the whole room. Oh, oh, sorry. No, this is it's a comedy of errors. I'll just have to do this without the camera. I had trouble with the camera because I'm on an old school desktop. So. Well, so here's what I love today. Um, <laughs> Annalisa just joined the room. She couldn't find us, the old one. 
You guys, we have had more tech problems. I did a I did a blab on Monday. It was seamless. It was so easy. And for some reason, we're waiting for Sarah to come back on. But we've had so many tech problems. And here's what I love. So there comes Sarah. <laughs> Whoops, I didn't mean to lock that seat. Sarah, request again. Sorry. Okay, so here comes Sarah back. Yes. <laughs> and, and Linda, we're not we're just be thankful that we can hear you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> the, I love this, right? So here's the thing. We have had the most imperfect connection and technology problems. Yes. And so what? I know. We're the, still having good time. Right. This is that's what I think I love about like it's real life. Like sometimes things just happen, right? And yeah. they they don't um, they don't happen with this perfect little bow and, you know, that small self inside us may say, well, you're not good enough or your technology sucked or whatever it is. And what I love about this is it gives us a platform to say, you know what, the imperfect is perfect. And so if we can't, so like I see Sarah's face, but can we hear you, Sarah? No. Uh, she's typing. Glad to have you here, Annalisa. Yeah, I saw that too. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, Sarah, we'll let Sarah figure out how to get back on. But uh, Linda, introduce yourself. Linda okay. is Sarah's mom, you guys. I love this. So tell us a little bit about how Sarah got you. Um, well, because I, I'm i just at that point where, well, first of all, I am, I'll just introduce myself. Yeah, I yeah. am, um, I'm a laughter yoga teacher and um uh, I lead laughter sessions throughout the community in in all aspects, whether it's for health and well-being in hospitals or senior centers or and I'm putting trying to put a program together going to the schools because more oxygen means more oh hello um, more oxygen means you you can focus better and so it works really well for kids in the schools. Is that Sarah? I'm trying to get her. She asked to come back in, but it's not connected. Flashing it, as well as the corporate world. And so I'm trying to put some programs together. Um, but I, I have a background as a as a professional clown for years. So I've always laughed for no reason. I well, I laughed with a lot of props and silly tricks and stuff. And learning to laugh for no reason without the use of comedy or jokes was like a godsend. It was a tremendous gift to be able to say, you know what, we all need to laugh. And so being able to do that on my scopes, um, Sarah got me into this and said, you need to do this. And I was like, I don't know. It's just one more technology that I'm not good at. I don't know. Mm -hmm. so, but she has been my coach and my trainer. And um, there are days I go, I don't know what to talk about. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I've said everything people want me to say, mm -hmm. but everyone is so nice and so welcoming. And you do feel like you're walking into somebody's home and your friends are all there going, Hey, welcome. <laughs> so it's been a lot of fun. What has, so I love that you kind of got over that. I don't know. And I hear that a lot. Why would anybody want a, a version of that? Right. Why would anybody want to hear what I have to say? And I've heard various people say that. And yet we all have, there's something when we share our heart. Yes. Here comes well, Sarah. And I think that that really is, oh, she's trying to come back. Come back, Sarah, come back. Um, that really is what comes through very quickly is people really are listening from their heart. They're trying to connect with each other. And I, it blew me away. Because Facebook is so static. Um, they're like scripted comments. And, mm -hmm. and you don't really connect on a personal level. But conversations get like last night's scope with Sarah. It gets it starts in one direction. And you have no idea where it's going to go. Because it's like sitting around with your friends. And they're going, yeah, but did you know? And suddenly everybody's going off in another direction. And it's like, that actually is very fun. You can just be yourself. Yesterday, I or I don't know if I scoped yesterday, but the last scope I did, they got started talking about drinking wine and my drinking habits. And it was like, what? And I was like, I don't drink that much. And so 
but it was very fun. It was very fun. It, there's a humanness to it. And I think there's the no like, you know, we've all heard in sales to put it in the traditional language, but we've all heard no people do business with people they know, like, and trust. Right. And I always say that the, the trust factor comes from excellence of product. Yes. And, but that's, a, that's the lasting experience, but the no and like yeah. is what, right. So uh, uh, the knowing, right. How do we get known? And so I'm curious, has, has, the time you've been on Periscope impacted your business? Um, no, it hasn't, which I see other people, you know, getting all these business opportunities. Mm -hmm. and I haven't, but it doesn't mean that it's not inspiring me mm -hmm. um, to do more. And I think that has been a big push for me. So that's right. good. Yeah. Well, and I would also bet that while it might not have impacted your business yet, your work has impacted others. I hope so. Oh, I know it has. I hope so. Yeah. I am Max was saying that he was, you know, he was saying something about like doing laughter or yoga, or he was going to go to a class because he was inspired by you. And so even though he's not coming to your class and being taught by you, right, you have inspired somebody to go out and seek and create laughter purposefully. Yes, which is really why you're doing it you just have and, to, I, and I love it. exactly and I love being able to help people find ways in their everyday laughter through their daily stresses mm -hmm. to just let go and say is it really that important if it's not life-changing and it doesn't and it's not that critical you can probably laugh at it and laugh at the things you can't change and I think that was really hard for me when I first started was letting go of my own uh, expectations and just being able to laugh at the things I can't change. I can't change my <laughs> physical appearance. I can't change, you know, a lot of things in my life. And I can't change the way somebody drives in traffic. So screaming at them doesn't, doesn't make <laughs> it better. I just wave at them and go, ha ha, have a good day. <laughs> Cause I can't change the fact they're long gone. So it doesn't do me any good to hold on to that anger and frustration that they weren't following the rules right so that's that kind of thing so i should probably get off so sarah can get well, back thank you let's see yeah normally it shouldn't but she it keeps kicking her off so linda thank you so much just for sharing a little bit and i love you know that you were nervous and apprehensive but clearly you're having fun and you're loving on people and people are loving you and i i have no doubt that actually people will end up in your classes locally through Good. this i have no doubt I know. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Linda. All right, a okay. Let's see if we can get Sarah back. Man, bless her heart. She's like I was at the beginning of the call trying to get in. I can see her come in. She asked for the seat. So everybody that's here and watching now, let's just send the, the internets and the connection some opening vibes. Here she comes. This is crazy, you guys. <gasps> She's back. <laughs> that was this is weird. Oh, uh, I don't know what happened. We just sage the internet, I'm saging the connection lines. <laughs> so <laughs> right? Oh my gosh. Well, you know what? It's so what funny because it's happening. Worked out, it worked out perfect um, because while your technology was broken your own DNA and mother shared with us a little bit about her journey and, and how you kind of got her on Periscope. Um, I forced her. Yeah. Well, she didn't, she didn't use those terms, but you know, she was willing to give it a go. And it's, I think that's another thing, like in the community, right? Everybody knows y'all and they know she's your mother and you're her daughter and y'all have been able to do not just your own professional scopes, but like seeing y'all out and about in Austin has, I, I, it just gives people access to who this person is. And then they say, like you said, I'd like to hand you money. Can I work with you, please? Can I work with you, please? And what business owner doesn't want to enjoy their everyday life, enjoy the people they're with. And then every once in a while have someone say, can I pay you for, for what you do? <laughs> Why not? I know it's incredible, yeah. right? Yeah. So what would, what would, 
I want to say like, what would your best advice or heart wisdom about sharing your heart and showing your work be to people watching or listening or to anybody? Okay. You can't hear still. Uh, I heard, uh, what's your best, is it advice on the uh, share your heart, show your work? Is that what you said? Yes. <laughs> yes, that is it, Sarah. <laughs> um, my best advice would be, there's one quick thing. So my mom and I were just talking about this before she left my house. Um, and I am adamant. I'm just adamant. Like there's something really passionate inside me that wants to make sure people understand this idea of about comparisonitis mm, because yeah. it will shut you down like so fast. And that I have a very strong belief that no single person is better than or less than any other as a person and human being. And I feel very strongly that everybody deserves to share who they are mm because somebody needs exactly who that is, who you are right now. They don't need you five years from now. They don't need you five years ago. They need you as you are today with all of your hiccups, with all your extra weight, with your, with your, your hair that needs to be dyed. Like they need you right now as you mm -hmm. are because you have something to share with them right now. And that waiting to be visible is just, I don't want to use the word selfish, but it's keeping all of that to yourself mm -hmm. when somebody else needs you to do that. Like somebody needs you to just be you so that you can give them permission to just be themselves. And it's not about five years from now, they'll be something better. Right. Or, you know, after you sell them a program somehow that they'll be better. It's like, no, no, listen, you can be amazing as you are today because this is who you are. And I think that um, sharing your heart like this is a true gift to, to everyone else and to yourself. Like I've been, like I said, reflected back of who I am and what I have to share. Like that was a huge gift for me to receive mm -hmm. just from being vulnerable and saying, this is who I am. This is all of me. And it might be, I might be your cup of tea and I totally might not be. And either way, it's totally fine because I'm not needing to be someone at a higher level. I'm exactly who I am. I'm not a beginner and I'm, I haven't been doing this for 40 years. Mm -hmm. So I'm somewhere in between, but if you resonate with me, then I'm happy to help you. And I would say that for anybody is getting over this idea that somebody's always gonna be better than you, so why bother? Right. Or if you can't make you know, 100 grand doing it, then why, why even share yourself this way? And it's like, because it's amazing and you receive so much in return, mm -hmm. so much um, love and intention and community in, in this giant feedback loop that we have from sharing out and you see the world with like different glasses, really. Um, you start to see yourself reflected in other people. So all the goodness that you have in you is reflected in the people that, you know, want to talk to you and want to hang out in your periscopes or on your Facebook page. And I think what it does is it starts to color your entire world based on how you put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. um, you start to see yourself reflected in all the people that you come in contact with. Um, so I have to admit this to you that when my when I told my mom that I was coming to your painting retreat, I was like, you have no idea. Listen, so I'm going to do this painting retreat with Alison Crow. And I said, she's like my, she's like a, like a, like a super shero uh, coach. Oh. I said, if there's anybody whose program I'd want to be in, it's Alison. I was like, and she asked me of all people. And I was like, this is so, um, but I was like, what I, uh oh, oh. I lost you. I hear, I see you and hear you fine. You're there. Can you, you can still hear and hear me? Okay, I'll keep talking. So um, <laughs> I'll ignore this technical glitch on your side and oh, just keep talking. Gross. But I was so. I can hear you, I just can't I see was you. so touched. Okay, well, I was so touched by you asking me to join you that I, I took a moment to really reflect that 
you know, it's not that it's not that I have anything special. It's just that you know, she saw something in me that reflected her of herself. And then what that was showing me in return is um, I get to see the things that I adore about you in myself. Like it hugely reflected back to me. And I'm like, this is, this is what Share Your Heart is all about is is being able to show each other like, you're amazing. I know, but so are you. Oh my gosh, we're all so fantastic. Like it's, there's no, there's, there's a, a lack of competition. Right. Which I, I just love. Marianne Williamson in The Law of Divine Compensation, and I'm, I'm not going to quote it properly because I don't have it in front of me, but she talks about my piece of pie is not bigger or smaller than yours. And I, originally in the coaching world, there was a strong sense of competition. And I realized in doing years and years of prosperity work and abundance work, that competition is scarcity. And that there is no such thing as competition that for for all of us, you know, it's this is not supply and demand, there's plenty of there's an abundance of supply. And when we share our heart, and we shine our light, so that's the thing, right? Like all of a sudden I saw your light in a new way and I had just the week before with a couple of clients and that's the one feedback I got on all my retreats. Like we wish there was some movement or some exercise da, 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 da. and I was like, oh my gosh, this is perfect. I wonder if Sarah would even be interested in coming to paint. I didn't know if you wanted to paint. And so it was just beautiful because <laughs> both of our pie it doesn't make your pie bigger or my pie smaller or any of that. You have a big, huge piece of pie. I have a big, huge piece of pie. And everybody watching here today, all of our pie pieces, you know, some, my husband told me the other day, I love my husband. And he was like, sometimes you're really boastful. Like you're really cocky. And I was like, <laughs> what do you mean I'm cocky? And he goes, well, you need to be a little bit more humble. And I'm thinking, no, I don't. I worked really hard to feel good about what I do. And when I feel good about what I do, it is not meant to make somebody else feel smaller. To me, that's what cocky is. That's what arrogant is. It's I'm puffing up my bigness not only so I feel big, but I feel small. But like Brene Brown talks about the the true vulnerability is, is experiencing joy and confidence. And, and what I love, I love that you brought that out was, you know, comparison steals our joy. And so many people are comparing themselves out here. And all that we're asked to do is shine our own light. And I believe on an energetic sense that each of us have sacred contracts. Like you and I had a sacred contract for this painting retreat and it couldn't have been activated unless I had been able to see you. And when I saw you, I was like, oh, there she is. That's the missing piece for this one retreat. And, and that's, you know, I, there's a little video on the sales page for the Share Your Heart, Show Your Work class. And you can find that at alisoncrow.com and then go to the classes button. I don't have a short link for it right now. Smart marketing, I know. So alisoncrow.com and classes is the middle tab. And there's a video there and it's my most popular YouTube video. And I, I, I'm not wearing a stitch of makeup, but I tell this story about when I was in college, my fifth year, I was living at home and I was crying because I didn't have any friends and I didn't have a boyfriend and I was in my childhood bedroom and my mom came in and was like, why are you crying? Oh, nobody loves me. I don't have any friends. And she's like, well, what do you think they're gonna do? Drive down the street and see a light on and go, oh, I bet there's an interesting young lady in there. Let's go knock on the window and see if she wants to come out and play. My mom was like, you have to put yourself in the path and I've never forgotten that lesson. And, and so what I love about social media, and we're specifically talking about Periscope today, and Periscope is just one of the really fun paths that we can show up on. And it's so cool to see who else shows up on the path alongside. And whether we bless them, I always say there's like a spectrum of blessing. And, you know, I can't really get my arms real wide to keep it in the video. But there's a, you know, on one hand where you hear somebody from across the universe sends you a little direct message or a message that says, thank you, you brought my smile back, or you reminded me to, 
to think about joy or I felt connected to spirit because of you or I started painting because you painted or, or whatever it is. And then you go all the way to the other end and remember there's everything in between but the other end where somebody literally is knocking on your door saying, I'd like to pay you to be my coach or I'd like to pay for your services. I'd like to pay you to work together. Hello, best, the universe pays us for being us. It's awesome. <sighs> so Sarah, are you still there? I'm okay, here. your audio is here. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, so here's what I'd like to do. Um, we'll we'll close out because we're a little bit over an hour, even though we started um, a little late because of the technology problems. But I would love for you, you have a couple of places where people can go. So I know um, at, Thri or not at Thrive, was at Thrive with Sarah is your handle. And you have also thrivewithsarah.com where you offer some readings and stuff, correct? I do, and, yes. And, and um, where else do you Sarah, want people to connect Sarah, with you? Yeah, sarah-ballard or sarah-ballard.com. Uh, Sarah, no H, S-A-R-A-B-A-L-L-A-R-D.com. That's my actual website. Mm -hmm. um, that's my full and complete website that has all of my offerings um dance and coaching and all of that um i do have a, a special website for just for periscope followers uh and that and for blab as well here uh but that is thrivewithsarah.com so people who want uh different kinds of readings or extended intuitive readings that site was set up just for the people on periscope because i feel so connected mm -hmm. to that particular community um but sarah-ballard.com is a great way to find me or at thrive with Sarah on any social media platform, awesome. <laughs> Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, anywhere is at uh, thrive with Sarah or at thrive with Sarah. Perfect. And I love that you guys, cause you can actually go and watch one of her periscopes and experience, be the recipient of one of her readings. You can actually experience that without even deciding to, to buy or having to spend a dime. It's, it's amazing. So thank you so much for being here. I also want to invite anybody watching um, either in the room or the replay to participate. I, you know, when Sarah was talking about how important it is that we share our hearts and we share our work because the world needs our work and they need us now. I've been being asked for a long time to put something together. And so I put together, it's only $333, you guys, and I'm giving... 12 hour and a half sessions. So six lessons and then an hour and a half um, in live interactive coaching Q&A about how to, so the theory of how to share your work and show your heart, the practice, and then also gazillions of ideas because I really do want to help the people that, and I say this with love, but that want to get their work out there. They want to be discovered. You know you have something for people. Maybe you're a total voyeur. I have a couple of people who are total that we, they're lurkers, right? And that's not a bad thing. They're just the people that watch because they haven't yet felt the, the guts to put something out there and yet they know they have something. And so if you want to, um, if you're even already out of the closet or you want out of the closet and start sharing who you are and the work that you do with the world, um, I'm a pro at it, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> My husband, I can hear my husband going, be humble. But really I am good at it. 100% of my business comes from social media. Um, and with and by being me, not with a massive marketing push. And so at alisoncrow.com, you can find my share your heart, show your work. And I will be, if you're following me on any social media channels, I'll be sharing the ever living love out of that program up until the day that it starts, which is the last Tuesday in September. So thank everybody for joining us. Thank you for those of you who stuck with us despite our technology problems. And Sarah, thank you for breaking blab with me. I feel honored to have broken thank blab you. with yes, you. Yes, it's an honor. We broke blab. That's <laughs> it. We broke blab. Love you guys. Thanks so much. And we'll see you on Periscope soon, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, I hope. Thank you, You're Allison. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.